Hi, I'm Paul Carson at the Artisan Society. And today we're going to talk about how to set the bicycle frame jig for the Build Your Own Bicycle Frame class. I copied these from a common older design. They're made out of one inch square tube and they use half inch fasteners between the tubes to keep all of the parts in line. The first thing that you're going to do is consult your frame drawing. From that drawing, you'll get your seat tube length, your top tube length, the length from the top tube head tube joint to the bottom of your head tube, and the angles between the head tube and top tube, seat tube and top tube, and the relationships for your rear triangle. We're going to start with the seat tube. To set the length, get out a magnetic backed rule. They should be in your kit. And line the zero line up with the center line of the pivot bolt between the seat tube and the top tube. Then, using a 3 8 Allen wrench, loosen the bolt behind the bottom bracket heat sink. And move your bottom bracket height to the desired seat tube length. I'm going to make this one a 54 centimeter. Now that my seat tube length is set, I'm going to set my top tube length. Again, I'm going to use a magnetic backed rule to set it on top of the top tube guide. It doesn't matter which end I put the zero on. This particular frame is going to be 54 centimeters square. I've set my zero at the head tube top tube. So I will adjust the seat tube You'll notice that I only loosen the pivot bolt. If this bolt is loosened, make sure that you tighten it because this bolt controls the seat tube length independent of the top tube intersection. I'm now I'm going to move it to 54 centimeters. And tighten, but not over tighten, the pivot bolt between them. Now that you've set your seat tube length and top tube length, you need to set the angles between them. We're going to be using a horizontal top tube in this class, so the angle is easy. The top tube is level with the ground. You set the angle of your seat tube between the seat tube and the top tube here, and the head tube between the head tube top two here. The easiest way to do this is to loosen the stabilizer bar at the bottom. To set the head tube angle and the seat tube angle after it, we'll hold the protractor into the joint like this while reading off of the protractor skin. This particular frame is going to be 73 degree parallel. So I'm going to set the protractor to 73 over here. Without tightening either bolt on the stabilizer bar, I'm now going to check my C2 back. I then adjust my C2 angle, double check my head tube angle to make sure that I didn't bump it when I was moving everything around. still in good shape. 
now my angles are set, I'll tighten up the stabilizer bar, lock everything in place. After setting your seat tube length and your top tube length, and your seat tube angle and your top tube angle, the last measurement for the front triangle is the length of the head tube from the head tube top tube joint to the bottom of the head tube. Use one of your magnetic back scales to measure from the center line of this pivot bolt to the bottom of your head tube. I tend to like to mark this with a piece of tape on the head tube slot. That way I can reference it when I'm taking my head tube on and off or moving my lugs around on my head tube. Once you set your front triangle, it's time to set the rear triangle. The rear triangle is where the rear axle goes. Typically, you specify that with the bottom bracket drop and the chain stay length. The problem with those measurements is that they're not perpendicular, but it's easy to make them perpendicular with a calculator I've posted to this blog article. What you do is measure along the seat tube and perpendicular to the seat tube. It lands you in the same place, but it uses legs that are square to each other. To do that, you'll use your magnetic fact scales again. And measure from the center line of the bottom bracket to the center of the slide for the rear axle. Double checking to make sure that the rear axle slide is perpendicular to the seat tube slide. I'll then measure along this slide perpendicular to the seat tube. You may need two magnetic back scales for this. The zero goes in the center of this slot. The next one goes along this center line slide. The first one, the zero, is in line with the slide of the seat tube. The second one is set so that its zero point is at some easy to remember and add to measurement. I'm gonna set this 20 centimeters from here so that now I can set my dummy axle, which threads against itself anywhere in this range. Once that's set, your frame geometry is established and you're ready to start cutting tubes and fitting things up.